Welcome. Thank you. I'm going to talk about the internal internationalization of the cybersecurity industry. And I would like to start by talking about competitiveness. I don't know if you agree that that is a key element. Last year, uh, a collaboration agreement was signed between INCIBE and, and ISEX to, to promote uh, internationalization. Thanks, Monica. Thanks for inviting me. I'm uh, very glad to be here, and especially um, face to face. So I'm rather new in this position. But my colleagues, both Javier in ISEX Madrid and Isabel in Valladolid, and all, all the staff we have in Leon are the experts uh, on this subject. So I just uh, uh, do follow up and and I contribute with my recent experience in Israel and, and Singapore, and I think I can contribute um, a bit to, uh, to ISEX. So regarding the collaboration agreement, yes, you are right. We have been co um, cooperating on cybersecurity with INCIVE since uh, 2015, but in 2019, we signed an agreement. And that agreement uh, was an initiative to, to uh, make internationalization um, easy for uh, for companies because that's that is the way companies grow so the second objective of this agreement is to accelerate uh, growth of SMEs and and startups on cybersecurity and we are very satisfied of this, uh, of the growth of the work we've done together uh, I think when we talk to foreign companies or foreign institutions and we tell, tell them that we want to introduce them to Spanish companies specialized in cybersecurity, uh, we, we get a very, uh, very good response. Yes, uh, because our counterparts in, in foreign countries appreciate that we are the face and the introductory point of those uh, um, specialized companies. So what are the initiatives? Uh, what kind of initiatives are being carried out already? Well, the, the most visible one in the United States, um, Ethex and INSEBE are supporting the organization of the Spanish pavilion of the RSA, the um, um, International uh, Fair on uh, Cybersecurity. In February 2022, um, we, we, um, it, it will be held in, in 2022, and there are many companies interested or, already. So the more companies um, come, the better. So, so and then some markets, uh, some key marks have been identified, and we have raised the, the awareness of those um, commercial offices in those countries about cybersecurity, and uh, especially uh, in Israel uh, and Singapore. So uh, we, uh, we have realized that uh, Spain has a good image uh, abroad on cybersecurity. We need to believe in ourselves i think is is this, the work being done uh, internationally is um, is very good last year was complicated because of the pandemic but uh, but um, even so uh, 30 counterparts foreign counterparts came here um, to to talk and to um, close deals on these uh, initiatives and we uh, help uh, startups to uh, approach foreign um, institutions and to get uh, much faster to uh, the foreign markets. Yes, so uh, February 2020, 
in San Francisco, which is a, a unique opportunity. There are more and more um, companies on cybersecurity that uh, go international. So what is the status in terms of uh, the internationalization of this sector? Well, I think there is still um, quite a bit to do. So we are the spearhead of, uh, of the sector. We are opening markets, and we have to work hard uh, on selecting uh, specific markets and work on those markets. And then maybe we can uh, uh, we can talk about what has been done in Singapore. It's a small country, but with a lot of opportunities. And it's a good example. But um, about your question, I think there is um, still a lot to do. Maybe m m other countries have a better um, image, and they have moved faster. So we need a clear strategy. We need to go to to. Um, um, specific markets, uh, help the companies, give them information to go abroad. What are the main problems of the companies um, on, in this area? Well, the f first of all, the lack of information is the most important one. And that is why the agreement between between ISEX and SIBE is key. So. Thanks to this agreement, uh, people on the field have more information and are able to work on this. So also, the availability of uh, human resources. And, and, and we, we cannot be everywhere, so we need to choose where we are and where we work. So we are creating tools that um, make it possible uh, to, do, uh, to do things re remotely. Or, or being part-time uh, in that country. But that allows you to be seen as a part of that ecosystem. And so yeah, that way you, you can develop uh, the business. Uh, and so that you don't need to create something uh, in, in the company on site. And what other ways um, are you using to help companies? So I've told you before about the tools developed by um, ISEX and INSIBE focus on cybersecurity, but there are other elements, more generic elements, that companies can use. And the cybersecurity companies are um, invited to do that. So just to, to name a few, um, we have a tool called ISEX Next, which is a sort of a consultancy service for companies interested in internationalization. And then, then there's a new instrument called Localize that helps SMEs to, to um, establish uh, companies in, in a country with funding from the uh, from ISEX, um, funding that they don't have to uh, return, and that is a, a huge help. So the, the tender is, is open now. I think it can be useful to cybersecurity companies. And we have more fairs, for instance, in, in, in Barcelona, or websites in, in Lisbon, or in some um, niche countries such as Finland, some countries who have identified as interesting. We, um, we participate as the uh, Spanish pavilion. Um, we have two other programs, such as the program Desafia, which has been created by ISEX. Uh, uh, to work on, on San Francisco and Tel Aviv, and then also in the, in the, in the Netherlands and, um, and Singapore. And cybersecurity is present on those platforms. So that is a landing platform for Spanish companies that want to, uh, that wish to approach those markets. So we are um, doing well and doing more and more with the European funds. Thanks to the European funds, we're going to do even uh, more and create more initiatives. And then we have a program called Open Innovation. 
innovation. Yeah, we approach um, sectors or we approach markets that already identify Spain as an interesting market. Um, that is uh, work uh, being done by colleagues, by our colleagues, experts on this subject, and that helps foreign companies to see and to explore um, cybersecurity um, uh, companies in Spain. And, uh, for instance, in in cyber in health cybersecurity. Um, and then um, we have other uh, in initiatives and, and many others. Yes, a, very, a good deal of, of tools, of programs, initiatives. I think everyone is, is taking notes. And no doubt they can go to you to um, expand on that information. So how mature is uh, the Spanish industry? You said that you have to believe in, in ourselves. What are our strong points compared to our to other countries? Yes, I have just um, um, arrived here at the, in this position, but I have experience in Israel and Singapore, and we are better known than we think. So proposing an initiative in terms of collaboration means selling and with a, with a wide view and we are known because of our talent and it's often said that we lack talent but Spain is known as a source of talent and also as a, as a place where there are uh, niche companies, especially in critical infrastructures, where we have um, expert companies on this. And uh, um, public companies in Singapore are interested in, in getting to know uh, technological companies in Spain. So we have to believe in ourselves and be brave and go abroad uh, and um, get the support of um, INSIBE and, and ourselves. So um, from those experiences in, in Singapore and Israel, Israel is a reference on cybersecurity. What can we learn from, from them, from Israel? Three things I can think of. First one, in Israel, cybersecurity has not, was not developed just on its own, it was a, a government program. So the, the Israeli government um, funded the many programs, and it was uh, something that uh, uh, happened naturally. It was it was a conscious decision. Israel needed uh, um, different. Uh, projects and the startup nation for instance the startup nation initiative was born in the agricultural sector and they um, f they focused on different sectors um, cyber security and fintech uh, uh, were born uh, 12 years ago so, for instance in travel tech israel is not um, is not making progress because there's no need. Um, there's no need. There's, it's not interested in in developing tourism, so they don't develop that sector. But if if the country has a need, then they invest on on, on that. And two other um, lessons that I learned in uh, in these countries. So, for an ecosystem to exist, it needs pillars. It needs uh, uh, startups and SMEs, but also corporates, and then also funds, accelerators, universities, public support. The key is not to understand that those pillars exist, but when we want um, to inter internationalize an ecosystem, we need to link those pillars 
with the, the with the pillars of the country where we want to uh, build that bridge. Not only with with uh, startups, which we can link with corporates. In Singapore, I learned that you have to enter with a, with an institutional weapon, so to say. You have to get the help of, of the institutions, so the, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, for instance. So a confidence is built, and from from then onwards, we go uh, we go working case by case. Uh, for instance, uh, using uh, uh, consulting companies, um, we um, collaborated with with uh, three companies uh, in Singapore. Um, technical days. Uh, they are now um, virtual, but they will be face to face. As soon as there is a, a business opportunity, we have to make the most of it. A lot of homework. A lot, uh, we have um, a lot of lessons learned that we have learned. Uh, we have learned from you. Thanks for sharing all that with us. Thank you. A big round of applause for him. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Thank you.